Hi, I'm Michael Castiglione. I'm a chief designer here at Advanced uh, Product Design Center. It's called Pacifica in Chrysler. I'm Alan Barrington, designer at the Pacifica Studio and designer of the Challenger interior. I mean, it sounds corny, but at one point I just wrote down everything I thought of just ma what's masculine just off the top of my head. Like I wrote football and tribal tattoos and drinking beer and all kinds of, I mean, it's kind of corny, but then I thought, okay, is there a way to kind of pull these things somewhat into the design, even if it's subjectively? Like, which is kind of where the, the six-gun shooter headlamp kind of came from. It's almost like you're looking at the barrel and you can see the shells in there. And it's real kind of subliminal, but sort of masculine, you know, sort of background in there. We looked at some uh, tire treads that were like tribal tattoos, and we ended up thinking it was too literal to put on the car, but I think masculinity in general is a little bit more balanced than it used to be. You know, I'm in love with my, my family, and I put a lot of pride in, in that, as well as my hobbies with cars. And I think that I'm not too unusual in that way. I think most men in general now tend to balance their lives better. Yeah, when we started working on this, I think Charger was already launched or was just about to get launched. And we felt confident that we had done sort of a modern take on what a muscle car is with Charger. And um, there were still a lot of enthusiasts who wanted two doors, they wanted a six speed, they wanted a little bit more heritage sort of styling to it. And those types of, that type of input was coming in at the same time we were exploring two door muscle cars on this platform. I think the X tier stands apart in that it's, it's capitalizing on a, a real signature car that was distinctly Mopar. The other thing is uh, we do have an independent rear suspension in our car that is going to perform real well. I mean, we use it already in our, in our um, sedans currently, 300 and Charger. But I think it's mostly just the, the signature lines on the car that, that look back at the original. The signature hood uh, has a really unique shape to it, and we actually made the butterfly valves function with the throttle which it didn't originally, but kind of, you know, you, you kind of think back to that designer, I bet you he, if he could have done it, he would have. Um, so it's basically a real high thrust line. The car looks like it wants to get up and run. And um, the cab is pretty far rearward on the car, short rear deck. Um, the back window is upright. It's not real laid down, which is something I didn't like about, you know, this car here we did the more retro approach on the, on, on, the, on the scale model that I worked on. But the other two were more laid down back windows, which is, to me, became more of a sports car than a muscle car, just in that one thing. So I thought that it needed a, a back window that had some sort of vertical shape to it. One thing, that, you know, he, we, were t we were talking earlier about the color, and we went up at Metal Crafters to view the car in sort of a you know, pre-finished you know, finished meeting. And it was just bare carbon fiber. They built the entire body out of carbon fiber. And we were always intending to have these black stripes on the hood and maybe somewhere else in the grill insert, maybe around the tail lamp. And we looked at that in carbon fiber, and it looks so cool. It's like you almost want to just clear coat the thing or leave it satin just like that. It looks so hot. I took tons of photos of it. But at that point, we realized, you know what? Instead of painting the stripes on it, let's just leave the bare carbon fiber on it. So that's what we did around the headlamp areas and around the hood and on the, around the tail lamp surround. So that, that's a detail that I was proud of. And yeah, and the exhaust, like if you look at some of the original cars, this one's kind of like the vanishing point car. It has a really sort of bold rectangular shape, very different than anything at the time. Even today, it's, you don't see it. It's, everything's either an ellipse or a circle. And so it had this really unique signature that I thought we'd be foolish not to capitalize on. So we did that in the uh, concept car um, and tried to integrate it into the valence a little bit better than what was done originally, a little bit more custom look, but, but the basic signature of that. Yeah, we played around with a lot of tail lamp concepts. And another unique thing about the original car was this sort of approach the part angle, the car really has this sort of V-shape inside you. 
to the front with the grill being the leading part of the front end and the tail lamp being the, the last thing you see. And so we played around with that a lot. The challenge is that now we have bumper laws that you know we have to adhere to which are much lower. So it was a challenge to try and make it look like it had this tension point up high, but yet we still had protection down low. And we played around with different uh, tail lamp shapes. It is a very signature thing of the 70 that it had a full width tail lamp. So once we started getting the basic proportions of that right, it seemed to work out. If you look at the basic proportion of the original car, and one of the guys here has a killer 73 Challenger that he's restored. So we brought that in the studio. We also had a 70 from, it was a, a good friend of one of the guys here, and he stored it here the whole time we were working on the, the design. It was here as inspiration, and if you look at that basic side view proportion of that car and what we had to work with, it was pretty different. The windshield was, it had to be a foot farther forward on the platform that we had. And if we move the windshield back, it gets into a huge cost because there's an engine box that had to be changed. So we had to keep the windshield touched down the same, which was a lot farther forward than the original car if you look at them in side view. So we had to play some tricks to try and get the proportions to look more like the original, but still be, you know, once at least a, a full step in the modern side. So I think that ended up working in our favor too once we nailed it. But there was a point in the clay modeling process where it seemed like the lines were, were you know, the thrust line on the car and the, and the deck lid relative to the back window and the windshield, the way the cab sat kind of rearward on the car like an original, like an original Challenger and the way it sat on the wheels. I remember there was one point where we were looking at the clay outside critiquing it and I thought, man, I think we can pull this off.